What's up, gangsters? It's been a few minutes since I've made any videos. Uh, it's uh, just been like that for the last few weeks. Uh, here we are in uh, mid-December, and um, I am working on projects. Uh, it's just that uh, hasn't been really conducive to making any videos about it. Um, part of the reason is because, uh, honestly, the major project I'm working on right now is something that, for various reasons, I just can't talk about. So, it is what it is. Uh, but, at any rate, I did make one not uh, too long ago because I was uh, going through reference photos, which is something I do a lot of. I have, a, I have like, 5,000 of them, uh, which I'm sure is small compared to some people's collections, but one thing that's important to me is uh, keeping them organized and accessible, and I use Lightroom for that, and I've done a, a little, I've done at least one video talking about how to use Lightroom. Um, I know that, you know, not all model makers are really into the photography aspect of it and don't really care about you know, spending money or effort on a program like Lightroom, but if you are using it as a photography app, I think it's also good to know how it can serve you as a uh, an organizational tool as well, because that's really one of its strengths. It, it makes uh, keeping track of your photos uh, a lot easier. It's got a lot of power in that respect. So anyway, without further lip flapping on my part, let me show you how I use Lightroom to organize my reference photos. We are inside of Lightroom. Now, the first thing that you have to do, obviously, is import your photos. And I'm not going to go through all that yet, anyway, uh, or in much detail, because I've covered that in my uh, other video about using Lightroom, which you really should probably watch first if you're actually interested in using this software or uh, uh, you uh, are, are trying to learn or you have it and you're trying to learn how to use it. But anyway, once you've got the photos in here, you'll see that uh, you'll see a couple of things. Uh, so like right here, I've, I've selected this uh, B25 image and you'll see over here that there are some keywords and keywords are basically part of the metadata and they stay attached to a file um, once you export it or save it with those you know with that metadata added to it and it, it's super valuable uh, you know other other kinds of metadata include all this stuff you know about how the photo was taken who took it when they took it etc uh, but what we're really concerned with here is keywords and how to use those. And I'm going to show you uh, three different ways to add keywords to your photos and, then, uh, and, and why they are so powerful and useful. The other thing you'll notice is that some of these images have a blue outline. And um, that's because I've added a blue tag to those and I'll show you how to do that and also uh, the reasons why. Okay, so first things first, let's talk about uh, keywords. All right, um, you'll notice, uh, like with this one, this is a, an image of P38 radio set and it has these three keywords attached to it. And um, you can see that those are also down here. Now that's one way you can add keywords, like I could say USMC, Jets, Harrier. Obviously all those are wrong, but the point is you can select those from that list of uh, keywords that Lightroom uh, holds in its memory and, and, and makes available for you. Uh, and basically anytime you create a new keyword, it sort of gets stored in there. Uh, but I'm going to delete those because uh, we don't obviously want those for that image. Now, um, that's one really quick and simple way to do a single image. You can also do that to multiple images. So let's do uh, so let's select all four of these, and let's say uh, let's actually let's let's select all of these. And let's say that I want to add a new keyword and I want it to be radios. All right, so I just type that in, hit enter, 
and you can see what I was just saying that's now appeared down here in the list and now all of these images that I had selected at once include the keyword radios okay so that's a pretty quick way to do it now there is yet another very quick and easy way to do this um, let's say that uh, I want to uh, add some keywords uh, let's say I want to add the keywords nose art that's a category I've, got, I've collected a lot of lately. So if you look down here, you'll see this thing here. Uh, looks like a little spray can. This is a super useful tool. If you click on it, you'll see over here, enter keywords to paint onto photos here. All right, so you're probably way ahead of me. Um, nose art. Okay, so I'll hit enter and now Nose art is a keyword that's associated with the spray can, and you'll notice that now if I have the cursor over the image itself, it turns into the little spray can. And what happens is if I click assigned keyword nose art, and if you actually select the image, look over here, and it says nose art. Very quick and very handy. Now I could go through and I could do that one at a time on each individual image, but you know that gets a little bit slow and uh, you know sends you down the road towards carpal tunnel syndrome. So what you can do instead is if I know that all of these, for example, want to be uh, identified as nose art, I can I can uh, just spray across all of them. And you'll see that the edge highlights whenever the spray can passes over it. And now every one of these images that I just sprayed across has the keyword nose art. Much faster than just clicking on each individual one. You can really work through a lot of images very quickly by doing that. Okay, so that is the uh, third way that you can add keywords. I'm actually going to show you a fourth one uh, here in a few minutes. But before that, um, let me explain these blue labels that I mentioned before. Blue, purple, you can make uh, any of these five colors. And the way that you do that is you just select an image and then you select the color that you want it to be. Very simple. It's a lot easier to do it in grid mode uh, because then you can actually see when you put the little colored frame around it or when it actually uh, turns the whole little area there green. Uh, so uh, why would you do that? All right. The reason being, uh, and if you want to turn it off, uh, by the way, you just click on it again. And there are other uh, labels or tags you, you can use here as well. You can do... Uh, you know, like two stars, five stars, whatever. Um, and the reason that you would use any of those is right down here. Uh, these are called filters. So let's say that I wanted to look at all of my purple colored images. All right, so I just click on the purple filter, and you have to click on it twice for some reason. I don't know what the deal is with that, but these happen to all be uh, my uh, B25 Mitchell engine images. And uh, so by using that filter, I can go to that sel selection set very quickly um, and, you know, examine whatever details about B25 engines that I want to see. Uh, it's just another way of, uh, you know, using the filtering tools to uh, you know to very quickly find stuff when you've got a large collection uh, okay now I mentioned that fourth way of adding keywords and uh, uh, getting images into a collection did I talk about collections I don't think maybe I did talk about collections yet so um, before I, I go on to that next method I will explain what a collection is and why you might want to use it. Okay, you may have noticed that right over here, I've got some lists of things. 
and these are called collections. And basically what that is, is it just allows you to take a selected set of images and put them all into one place that's recognized by Lightroom. It doesn't change their file location on your computer or anything like that. It's just basically an internal sort of marker that identifies all of these images as being in one spot. And it's a pretty handy thing because you know, you might really just want to get to a particular set of images without having to do any sort of uh, keyword search or, uh, you know, any kind of filtering or anything like that. Um, so it's a pretty handy thing and they're pretty easy to create. Now, I don't think that I really demonstrated the keyword search yet, so um, while I'm uh, showing you how to put images in a collection, let me show you the keyword search. All right, so uh, let's go up here to uh, text. And let's say that I wanted to uh, create a collection. Let me just create a collection here. All right, let's start a collection for... Uh, P38 pictures, okay? All right, and I don't want to include any selected photos yet, so we'll hit Create, all right? So you can see right there, and it has zero photos in it. Okay, now let's go to the overall uh, group of images here, the overall uh, thing, and let's see if we can find some P38 pictures. I've imported some recently, so there we go. These uh, P38 radio pictures that I was talking about before could go in there. So I'll select all these, and it's very simple. I can now just take these and drag them over here into the P38 collection. You can see now when I go there, there's nine images that appear in there. but um, let's say that I uh, don't want to count on just, you know, finding those manually, all right? I want to find all of my images that are keyworded P38. So when you're in grid mode, you go up here and you click text, and then here in this field, I can type in P38, and now automatically every image that's in my uh, catalog that has P38 as a keyword is now going to show up. And you can see now why I use this, these keywords that I do, because it gives me uh, increasing levels of granularity in my search terms. I could search for everything from World War II, I could search for everything from the U.S. Army Air Force, and I can search for just p 38 And again, as I was saying, you can go into even further levels of detail. But that's the basic way of using your keywords to find things and including uh, to put them into a collection. And the collection then, of course, is yet another way of, of organizing images. Now, let me demonstrate the fourth way that you can add keywords. I want to uh, go over to the import dialog and we're gonna bring some new images in. And as always, Lightroom has a great memory and it knows all of the places that I've brought images in from before. So there's my reference photos folder just waiting. And what it's gonna do is immediately go and look for new images that uh, it hasn't seen before, which is also a very nice thing. And it's going to uh, uh, it's it's going to default to checking all of them, but I don't want to add all of these at once. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to uncheck all, and then I'm going to just grab these B25 images here, and I'm going to select all of those. Okay. Now, if you look over here, you can see where it says Add to Collection. So I'm going to select that option. And you can see that it gives me my list of collections. So I'm going to highlight B25. Now I'm going to add for keywords B25, World War II, USAAF. And now when I hit import, it's going to automatically 
not only import these images with the keywords that I gave it just now, but it's also going to automatically add those to this collection over here. I don't know if you noticed, but it was 276 images before, now 284 images. So that is a super, super fast way of being able to uh, add keywords and organize your stuff. So uh, it's pretty efficient. So there you go. There's, uh, I think, four different ways that you can add uh, keywords to Lightroom. Uh, you know, there's uh, these color labels that you can use. And all of this stuff is about being able to get to specific images in a big hurry, which is always a handy thing. You know, you find yourself in a Facebook model making group and some silly person says something like, Spitfires never got weathered and you're like, ah, that's bullshit and you need to very quickly be able to go to your photo collection and find the evidence required to counteract that kind of silly argument. And, you know, there you go. You've got all of your Spitfire images in one single place and you're ready to go do battle. <laughs> that obviously is a pretty silly way to use all of your uh, research images, but you get the idea. Lightroom makes it easier and faster no matter what the reason is. Okay, so there you go. Um, I know that's not going to be you know super useful to a lot of people, but again, if you do use Lightroom, it's uh, I think it's good stuff to know. So anyway. Um, I hope it was uh, informative and useful as always, and I definitely appreciate you watching. Much love.